So we have to learn to wait. And waiting is difficult. Number two, we have to, we have to, Jesus is delaying his coming so that we can not only wait, but because he wants us to work. Work. Work is one of those full letter dirty words, you know. Work. Most of us like that three letter nice word, pay. <laughs> you know. But you have to work. He wants us to work. Jesus said in John chapter number 9, verse 4, He said, work while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. Now, we know that to be not necessarily true today because it's almost as many people who work at night as they do during the day. Now, what kind of work are we to do? Well, first of all, we're to sow the seed of the Word of God. Why does the Lord wait? Why is He an outcome? Why does He delay? Do you think the world needs to hear the message of the gospel today as much as it ever has? Amen. How many of you would agree as much? But how many would agree it needs it more? Yeah. It needs it more today. What if God had come 10 years ago? Of course, we wouldn't have the people that we have now. But God wants us to work. God wants you to work individually. He wants every one of us as individuals who know Him to spread the Word of God, to sow the seed of the Word of God. You do that on your job. You do that in your school. You do that in your family. You do that wherever you go in the grocery store, all around you. You sow the seed. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter number 8 and verse 4, it says, And they went everywhere, and when they went everywhere, they preached the Word. They spread the word. Sow the seed everywhere you go. Not only does he want us to sow the seed, but he wants us to tend the sheep in the flock. Did you know this? We have a responsibility to each other. We have a responsibility to bear one another's burden. We have a responsibility to encourage each other. We have a responsibility to enlighten each other, to lift each other up. I have a responsibility to pray for you. You have a responsibility to pray for me. And in that work that we do, we build up each other. And that's why God sometimes delays. Then we have a responsibility in doing the work of the the family name. Stand up for your family. And I'm talking about your own personal family. <laughs> you say you don't know my family. Stand up for them. First of all, stand up to, for the family and stand up for most. Not, not anything, really. Amen? Amen. They're your blood. They're your, they're your blood. If you can't be loyal to your family, you can't be loyal to anything. And that goes true for being a Christian as well. You hear somebody say something bad about people in this church, stand up for them. Say, well, you can't talk about my brother, my sister like that. Amen? Amen. And by the way, everybody that's been to this church is not as good as you are. <laughs> Glad they're not. <laughs> Thank God for those many, many, many that are better than we are. But stand for your family. Defend that. You know, people talk about the church today, and you always got gossips and people who, and by the way, most times it's Christians, quote unquote. Everybody who says they're going to heaven ain't going. And I'm, I'm sorry that, that that comes a shock to you, you know. 
It's like a woman went to see her son and participated, he would participate in a parade in the army. <laughs> There were 325 people in his company. And when his company went by, she looked at him, and it was a mother, and she said, look at all them people out of the fat. The only one step, my son. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That ain't the case. So be, be willing to work. Be willing to work. And not only that, but be ready. Be ready. Are you ready for the Lord to come? Now be honest. I know you're you are you are people watching you. Unless you're like Tim and Judy and Mike and Vicky sitting on the back row. <laughs> they ain't watching you. Some other ways you sit that in and, and you say you if the preacher says, Are you ready? What are you gonna say? Most of us go, and we know, we know, we know, and you know what you ain't. You ain't ready. You don't want the Lord to come catch you doing the things you're doing now. You know you don't want the Lord to come and catch you and shake you in now. Amen? And we can, we can say we do and we, when we really don't. How do I get ready? How do I know that I'm ready? You remember the story in the New Testament. Jesus tells it about a wedding. And he said there were ten young ladies who went to be a part of that wedding. And he says they were Five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Now the way they had a wedding back then was altogether different than what we have today. They, and back in those days, they didn't have no preacher, no wedding cake. And, well, they didn't have a wedding cake, I don't know. They didn't have all the stuff they would. What they had was a betrothal. And that was when you were engaged, but you were considered married. Did you know that? You know, how do you know that, preacher? Because Mary and Joseph were married, but they were, they were husband and wife. They were looked as, on as husband and wife, but they hadn't gone through the formal wedding ceremony. Yeah. Some of you look at me like a cat looking at a new gate. <laughs> but that's the case. That's the way they did it. For a year that was a betrothal. You know why? Hey ladies, this is your life. Because a man had to pay a certain amount to gift a woman. I told my I told Buck, my son in law, I said, You saw a dog, you I spending all this money on this girl, raising her, getting her where she is, and you think you're going to waltz in here and get her for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> and I've been paying ever since. <laughs> he ain't paid a dime. <laughs> but that wasn't the way it was back in those days. See, there was a dowry that you had to pay. And sometimes, this, the dowry depended on the woman and her, her daddy. He did such a dowry, you know. Um, I mean, it might have been a hundred sheep. It may take you a year to get a hundred sheep. You know? So they set a year from the time of the betrothal to the wedding, the actual wedding. <coughs> And this was what had happened. It was time the betrothal had already taken place and Jesus said, now it's time for the... By the way, the bridegroom went to the bride's house and took his bride and took him home to his house. I like that. If you're going to steal my daughter and get her for nothing, take her to your house. I ain't keeping you up. <laughs> 
you, when you get back, you don't move in with mom and dad. <laughs> I like that part. That, you don't understand how I'm joking. Everybody that does that, that can go that way. But nevertheless, the Bible tells us these five young ladies went out. They wanted to be a part of the wedding party. When the bride came to get the bride, they wanted to be a part of that because it was a celebration. But then the Bible said, Jesus said, the bridegroom delayed his coming. He didn't come when they thought he was going to come. And the Bible says they all went to sleep. It's maybe we all ought to do that. You know? <laughs> they all went to sleep. And then when somebody, somebody said, the bridegroom's coming, the bridegroom's coming, then all of a sudden they woke up. It was still dark, and the Bible said they had lights. And the five wise young ladies had brought enough oil to relight their lights and able to find the bridegroom's home. The five of them were foolish and did bring in the oil. They looked at it. Five that had oil said, would you loan us that? Let me say this. This whole parable, this whole thing is teaching about salvation. You can't bar somebody else's salvation. You know that? Children can't go to heaven on their kids, on, on their mom and daddy's salvation. There, you'd be surprised if across this nation and around this world, there are thousands of young people that think just because their mom and daddy is going to heaven, and they go to heaven. No. That's a personal thing, my friend. It's your deal. You have to make the decision. So they said, no, we're not giving you now any of our because we have. So they went to buy oil. And the Bible says they purchased it. And then they went to the bridegroom's house. And the door was already shut. And they knocked on the door and said, Now we have light. Here we are. We want to come in. And they said, No. There was a time when you could have got in, but you didn't. So they were not able to go in and enjoy. And see, they weren't prepared. You see, you say, well, late that, how, why would he just keep them out because he didn't bring any oil? Because they knew the possibility of delay. You're always prepared, amen? amen? And when it comes to this matter of where you're going to spend eternity, you don't want to take any chances. Amen. If I had any questions at all in my mind, as to whether I was going to heaven or not, I'd get that settled beyond any shadow of a doubt. You say, well, can you know for sure? Sure! How many believe you know for sure? Say amen. 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 You can know for sure. There's no use to guess and hope and, well, I'll make it. Uh, yeah, that's what these, these five foolish ladies thought. They thought that they'd have plenty of all. They saw that they'd have plenty of time. But it didn't work that way. There's, most people are planning to get ready. At some point in their life, they're planning to get ready. But let me tell you, say this to you, preparation is a whole lot better than planning. Amen? Now, I know you've got to have planning before you can really do but if that's all you plan to do is planning it. See, some people just plan, 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 never get that done. But you've got to prepare. You've got to put that preparation. Do that preparation. Preparation is doing what the doctor says. <laughs> How many of you have ever had to take drinks and stuff before you went to see the doctor? Oh my God. 
doctors ought to repent in sackcloth and ashes for making you do that. You have to drink this junky stuff. And they tell you, well, you got to drink this before the x-rays are effective. Now, what, a, what would you do if you went over there and the doctor said, well, did you drink the stuff we gave you? No. Well, I, it's, I, I can't give you the x-ray. Well, I don't know why not. Well, it won't work. And I'm going to tell you this. Excuses won't work when we stand before the Lord. Amen? Yeah. He's given us clear instruction, clear direction, and excuses. Ain't going to work. Now, you have to not only be prepared, but you have to have to have a vision of what you want and need. What do you want? I want everything God wants for me. Amen? Everything God wants for me, I want it. I want to have that, if at all possible. And there's a way to get that. We can get that by doing what God says. Everything God has promised, He will do if we will do what He asks us to do. He will not force salvation on us. He will not force His will on us. But He gives us every opportunity to do that. Then not only that, you need to value yourself. Some people fail to realize how important they are. Do you know how, how valuable you are? <laughs> now, if we melted you down and got all the chemicals and minerals out, I think now it's 398. Some fat ones like me, it might be a little bit more. <laughs> you know, they, they make you might be a little bit more. Might be four dollars, I don't know. <laughs> but you see, God thinks so much of us and so much of each one of us individually that He died for. That's how much He thinks of us. So He puts an extreme value on you and me. So much so that He gave Himself. What more can He do? So value yourself. You're a valuable treasure. Not only to your wife or your husband or to your kids or your family, but you are to God. For God so loved the world. And that tells you where we are. Value yourself. God sees you so valuable as He gave His life for you. How do you see yourself? Are you that valuable? Being prepared is so important. Are you ready? If you came today, would you be ready? Would you be ready? Let me ask you this. If you came today, would you be regretful? Would you regret that you haven't done what you should have done? That you've done things that you shouldn't have done? You see, what we do is we don't ever know what's going to happen to us. Simply because you made it this far doesn't mean you're going to continue. I read this the other day that three of the people who escaped death in 9-11 in those towers two weeks later died in a plane crash. Can you imagine that? How ironic is that? Escaping such a terrible, terrible disaster in their life. You know, that might have given them some confidence, but maybe they should have taken to heart, hey, I can go at any time. We don't know the hearts of those individuals. We don't know whether God had spoken to them. We don't know whether they were Christian or not. We don't know whether God had encourage them to get right with him and live their lives for him. We don't know that. But I just point that out as a means of saying to each of us, we don't know when he's coming. And more than that, we don't know when we're going. <laughs> so we have to be ready. ready. Are you ready? Why does he delay? 
there wants to wait. That's the word to wait. He wants us to work. And he wants us to have time to be sure that we're ready. Please come. Would you stand with me, please, and bow your head? Our Father God, this morning we are thankful that you give us ample time, ample information, all that we should know, and you give us the wisdom to understand it, what we need to be prepared. For as you delay your coming, you will not always delay, you will come. But we need to be ready, and I pray this morning that we'll search our hearts and minds. And number one, we'll be ready because we're saved. Every person in this building, I pray, will know that they're saved by the grace of God. And every person in this building, we need to not only know that we're saved, but we need to know that we are serving the Lord in some capacity to be faithful to Him. Because that's why you leave us here is to work and to serve Him. So I pray that as we contemplate this invitation, whatever a person may need to do, that they will do that. We ask that you would help us to be obedient to you. While I hear the mouth and eyes are closed, let me ask you this. Are you saved? Do you know that when it's over here that you're going to be with the Lord? Do you know for certain that you're born again? I'm not trying to intrude into your affairs or your life, but I am offering you assurance this morning that you can know. How many of you have that assurance this morning? Would you slip your hand up real good and hide the testimony? I know that I'm saved. All right, thank you. Now, how many of you folks who lifted your hand said, I'm sure that I'm saved? But you'll be dead honest in your heart this morning. And you'll have to admit, I'm not ready for the Lord to come. I really am not. And it's not His fault. It's not somebody else's fault. It's mine. There are things that shouldn't be there. There are things that are not there that should be. Pray for me this morning, preacher. I'm not ready. Would you sit your hand up? Yes. Yeah, I'm just not ready. I'm not ready. Keep your hands up for just a moment. We're we'll going to pray. Father in heaven, for these folks who have their hands lifted toward heaven, I pray that you will help them to manage whatever is keeping them from being totally ready to welcome you. I pray that you will help them to have victory over those things. I pray that you'll help them to incorporate in their lives the things that they need to incorporate that you want to be now. I pray that you will see how help them to see how valuable they are to you and how you're depending on them. Father, would you get have your will and way in their lives? We pray that you'll give them victory. Now, while I hear the still bound, if anyone here this morning say, Preacher, if I were to die right now, I'm not sure that I'd go to heaven. Would you pray for me? Would you just pray for me? Would you just look at that one? Anybody? We just pray for you. That's all we want to do. Just pray for you. Anyone, anywhere, pray for me. Father, we ask that you would bless each one of us today. Use us for your honor and glory. May this service resonate in our heart and lives. May the message accomplish that where you send it to accomplish. Thank you for what you're going to do. And again, Lord, should there be one person or many people here that doesn't know the Lord, help them this morning to come to Him. 
Thank you for what you're going to do. We love you today. In Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Thank you for coming this morning. Appreciate you being here.